We are good to go. So hi everyone and uh, welcome to our channel. We had promised you that we will be bringing you this live stream at 7 p.m. But unfortunately, because of internet and uh, stuff here and there, we are not able to do it at that time. Nonetheless, we are here and uh, Adedamola is ready to share with us his Canadian immigration journey, how he was support, how he was able to uh, acquire a job offer from Canada and uh, while he was still in Nigeria. So welcome to the live stream. And uh, without further ado, I shall invite uh, the Dabola to uh, introduce yourself and tell us who you are, how you are able to arrive in Canada from Nigeria, get a job offer and yeah, welcome. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you Mary for having me here. Um, I did am allowed to, uh, like she mentioned, and uh, so I started my channel with uh, financial reporting. So I have, I've, I've not, I've not always been into uh, relocation vlogs and all. Yeah. So uh, basically, it was around uh, last year December when I uh, relocated to Canada that I started uh, bringing in relocation into my channel. So uh, I run a financial reporting blog. It is called IFRS is easy, and uh, I basically uh, tutor people on financial reporting. I'm sure accounting guys uh, among you will understand this. Yeah, so uh, basically what I got the job was to apply. So I was I was based in Nigeria before I relocated to Canada. So I am more into accounting. Yeah, so I deal with accounting advisory. That's what my profession is. So I just was applying like seriously, I was applying using different <laughs> using different platforms i applied on linkedin applied via canada job bank i was just applying and i got quite a number of rejection mails and then uh i eventually got the job of Fabi final got at the location so uh, let, let me hand over to mary to continue with questions okay so uh congratulations on your journey again thank you Thank you. I know it took you eight months. I read about your yeah. profile and everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah. that's quite a long time, taking yeah, time sure. to wait and being patient. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank so you. I've prepared some questions so that you can be able to enlighten us on how you did it and how you are able to achieve it. Right. So we shall jump right in the questions. All right. So how did getting a job offer as a foreign worker or as a foreigner living in Nigeria, simplify your relocation to Canada. Yeah, I, I think I think basically uh, uh, getting a job offer is to me the best route. Yeah, personally, yeah, because it helps you skill through a lot of others. Yeah, for example, when it comes to having to provide proof of funds, you know, generally for express entry, if you are coming to Canada through express entry you have to actually have proof of funds. And uh, if you don't have uh, uh, that much finance, you might be unable to uh, fund that. Yeah, so another thing that uh, it has helped me with is with respect to having to write IELTS. Yeah, IELTS is the Eng uh, International English Language Testing System. Yeah, so you have to write that if you're going through the express entry. But through the work visa, you don't need to to write that. Then another thing that I helped with is respect to sponsorship. So in terms of the application itself, is the employer that did the application on my behalf. So uh, yeah, that, that's basically, I mean, some of the benefits of having to uh, come through uh, the job offer out uh, in relocating to Canada for me. Wow, that is quite a lot because financial burden is something that is preventing so many foreigners from yeah. coming to Canada, you know, it is something that is they are struggling with. So hearing a testimony that you are able to come to Canada without having to spend a penny on the IELTS exams, on the proof of funds, and even in the relocation amount, that is such a huge achievement. Yeah. So, wow, thank you for sharing. So the next question is, were you applying to visa sponsored jobs or did they say they needed English language tests and did you do IELTS? Like, were you applying to visa sponsored jobs only? Uh, yes, yes. So, you know, it, it's either you go through the entry route or you actually uh, 
are interested in getting the work visa. So for me, I was actually more focused on applying to jobs that are visa sponsored. So, uh, and one of the main that which I got that was through the Canada Job Bank. So if you go to Canada Job Bank, you will see quite a number of jobs that, that uh, assist foreign workers in locating to Canada and they are visa sponsored. Yeah, so I, I was focused more on that. And because of my profession, I also had the opportunity to apply to jobs. Uh, you know, when you work in a multinational, there is a chance that the other company in other uh, countries can actually help you to uh, with, with the relocation itself. Yeah, so basically what I did was just apply uh, because the company that I currently work with, it's a multinational, I was able to use that to also apply uh, to, 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 the, uh, to the branch uh, in, in, in Canada as well. So basically that was what I was focused on. I was more focused on getting uh, visa sponsored jobs and I didn't have to write IELTS. So basically once you're going through this work visa route, you don't need to write IELTS based on my experience. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, that is true. So on to the next question. I am a job seeker looking for work yeah. in Canada from Nigeria, from Kenya, India, or the UK. And I have sent over 150 applications. And so far, yeah. I have not gotten any, any job offer. So okay. my question is, how did you write your resume? How did you send your okay. CV? How did you craft okay. it for you to land a job offer in Canada? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I think uh, basically you mentioned about sending quite a number of applications, which I actually did because mm -hmm. I started this application around mid-2021. That was when oh. I started the application, yeah. So I was applying like to different opportunities and as I was applying, I was getting rejection bills. Yeah, so <laughs> I eventually, eventually <laughs> landed uh my I, I even got like three of us uh after that uh, which was around uh march 2022 which was last year mm -hmm. yeah so it took me approximately close to a year before i eventually landed uh three different roles at the same time yeah so i think basically it is more about the approach that you use yeah so the number one thing i believe is consistency there is really no hard and fast route to it so you just need to be consistent with it. And then any rejection made, I get, take that rejection as an opportunity to improve on your delivery. So I think basically mm -hmm. I, I tried as much, much as possible to keep updating my CV. And one thing that I did was to also have focused applications. So in terms of the fact that mm -hmm. I'm applying and I'm focused on what the job description is, and I'm not all over the place. I'll, I try as much as possible to apply to jobs that I know fit my profile and i crafted my cv in order to meet that uh meet that uh goal so basically that was what really helped me and in order to craft your cv there's really no big deal in it the big ma major thing is you are looking at the job description i mean if you want to mm -hmm. apply to any job there's always a job description so you want to look at that job description and use that as a basis of uh, uh fitting your cv to meet that profile yeah, so that, that that's pretty mm -hmm. much it for me Wow. So what I are trying to say is that when we are sending applications, we are sending to different companies yeah. and uh, we should not use just one type of CV or resume to yeah. send to all of these companies that we are trying to apply to. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So uh, I believe that especially for people that have more than one role that they are looking to. I mean, I've seen people that will say, okay, I have experience in human resource. I also have experience in customer service and I want to be mm -hmm. applying to jobs in that. So I believe that for mm -hmm. someone like that, you need to have at least two CVs such that one okay. resume is fitted for uh, human resource. Another one is fitted for customer service so that you don't, it doesn't become an issue of uh, a recruiter gets your CV and is like, where, where, what exactly are you focused on? Yeah, so that's what I mean by yeah. focused application. So you have to have focused resume as well so that it will be easier for any recruiter to see you from your resume. Yeah. All right, that is great. So one of the things that uh, most of the people 
that I talk to, they ask me that you are in a, abroad. Let's say somebody is in Nigeria or they are in yeah. Kenya and they're trying to get hold of an employer that can be able to hire them in Canada. Yes. However, the kind of addresses that we are having in Canada, or yes. in uh, uh, Nigeria, in India or these other countries apart from Canada, they are foreign yes. uh, numbers. We have foreign addresses. Yes. So how did you go about that? We are advised to get foreign numbers. Did you have one? <laughs> okay, yeah, I also had uh, yeah, hear people say that, uh, but I don't think for me personally, I don't think it is necessary. Yeah, I actually didn't have to get a foreign number before. In fact, when I when I got the first uh, call from a recruiter, it was via my phone number. So what I did was to just ensure that at least I have my area code. So for Nigeria, our area code is plus two three four them before the numbers mm -hmm. and the phone numbers that many of these recruiters use they make international calls so they don't necessarily have to mm -hmm. call a foreign number before they reach out to you so they can as well just call you via mm -hmm. your area code which is in fact the first call i got for this particular job that i currently got it was via phone call and they just called me to say oh we want to schedule an interview with you and that's all and so you don't necessarily need to get a foreign number Okay, how about the addresses, for example, when yeah. you're writing I mean, yeah. Nairobi, yeah. Uh, the area code? <laughs> in, in, in terms of writing your address, so when you're structuring your CV, you sincerely don't need to mm -hmm. include your address in terms of your city. In fact, you don't even need to include your country because there are mm -hmm. times when some recruiters may actually look at your CV, see the address, and I mean, just to prevent unnecessary bias, you don't need to include mm -hmm. the address. Once you have the major mm -hmm. things you need to include in your header is your phone number, your email address, your LinkedIn mm -hmm. page, and your name. Once you have that, you're good to go. Those three actually speaks for you. So you don't necessarily need to, uh, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need to uh, include your address. Okay. Yeah. So that is in place. So guys, you have heard that you don't need a foreign number for you to get hold of a, a hiring manager in Canada. So go ahead, indicate your Indian, in your Nigerian, your Kenyan for numbers and you will get contacted. So the next question that I would like you for uh, to address for us is how many pages was your CV or how many pages should we send the employers of, okay. uh, in the resume? Okay, yeah, yeah. So in terms of CV writing, so there's mm -hmm. this there's this unspoken rule that your CV should not be more than two pages. Regardless yeah, of, that. I mean, you don't need to have more than two because people don't take time to, if you are a recruiter, ask yourself, will you read a CV that is more than two pages? No, you won't. You I don't have the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no time. Imagine yeah. 500 uh, inflows of uh, CV and then you want to start reading, you know, you don't. In fact, oftentimes what people, what most recruiters do, what I believe they do is they just count through the first page. If the first page does mm -hmm. not meet their requirement, then they dump it. Yeah, so the major thing you need to focus on is your first page of your CV. Put mm -hmm. all the next three things mm -hmm. there, your work experience, your technical skills, your education, your personal summary, just make it simple, crispy, and direct, concise, and straight to the point. Once you have that, you are good to go. You don't need, in fact, the maximum should be two pages. You don't need to have more than that. And then in terms of experience as well, you don't need to put the relevant experiences. You have 10 mm -hmm. years experience, and then the job is only requiring four years experience. You don't need to go mm -hmm. as far as 10 years uh, when you are even an intern and put all those, you don't need to except if you don't have so many experience and then you need to bring in as much as you can. But in terms of putting in experience, the major thing is to have focused application that deals with relevant experience. And that's what actually works. Yeah. All right. So you have mentioned severally about the experience and uh, some of us do not have maybe the experience for the jobs uh, in unskilled positions. Do you think that will be a problem when we are writing our CV and probably we do not have the experience to indicate? Do you think that will affect us getting a job in Canada? Yeah, so so I, I don't think that anyone would actually say they don't have experience. You can only say, okay, I don't mm -hmm. know how to structure my experience. Because whether mm -hmm. skilled or unskilled, 
there's something that you're doing. I mean, if you are working on a farm, there is a process to that. Yeah, so and uh, the internet has made it quite easy for anyone to be able to develop a CV. If you want to develop any CV at this moment, just go to Google and mm -hmm. search for a template. If it is a farmer's mm -hmm. CV, you just type farmer's CV. You will see a lot mm -hmm. of samples that you can use. If it is uh, admin assistant, just type admin assistant CV. You see a lot of templates that you can use. So there's really no, I mean, I don't think it is possible for you to say you don't have an experience. You could only say, okay, I don't have, I don't know how to uh, write that or put down my experience, which the internet has uh, provided for that already. Yeah, so that, okay. That, that's Okay, I see that. So one of the things that people are struggling with is we have uh, experience. For example, I've been working for company XYZ for the past 15 years. But okay. they say in the, you know, the popular opinion that we should state the information in terms of uh, statistical data. We should show yeah. the employer that we achieved this and this and that. So how do you think we're stating it in our resume so that it can be able to attract the hiring manager's attention? Okay, okay, yeah, I get that. So I know there are situations where people put in uh, uh, percentages in terms of, okay, this is what I achieved. Maybe I got mm -hmm. so and so, I made so and so profits for my company and all. Yeah, there are good things to have there, but the major thing is, are they measurable? Yeah, because if you want to put in a particular percentage, yeah, it has to be something that is measurable. Yeah, so I believe mm -hmm. that anyone that is putting that kind of information, you have to be able to back it up, which is very important. The another thing is sometimes people put in generic stuff in their experience, mm -hmm. uh, say stuff that are not necessarily, uh, they are not necessarily specific to you. So I think the major thing when it comes to writing down your experiences, try as much as well to make it specific to you. And then it has to be something measurable. Yeah, so for example, okay, you look at, okay, when you join the firm and you look at the kind of input that you have contributed to the firm. So you can talk about that. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I don't think it is compulsory that you have to put in those percentages. You can only put in okay. those percentages if they are measurable and if you can defend it. And that is the problem when people overstate what they've done or when they are not even stating exactly what they've done. So the major thing is, don't let it to be generic, make sure it is specific and make sure it is measurable. And that, that's about it for me. Okay, thank you for highlighting that for us. So the other thing is that in your video, the one that you have done about how to write a resume or a CV for the Canadian employers, you have mentioned that you got three job offers from UK, from Ireland and uh, Canada. Hey, you had so many choices, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that you, we should write years in a in a particular way so that the applicant tracking system can be able to track the number of experience that we have been working uh, yeah. over the years. Yeah. Could you uh, slightly enlighten us on how this is? Uh, we should go. Okay. Ag okay. Uh, go about it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. So so basically, this is how it works. So in a situation whereby, say for example. In year 2022, you worked at two mm -hmm. different firms. So say you resumed in company A in January and you worked until June 2022. And then from June 2022, you moved to another company and then you worked up to mm -hmm. December. So when you are stating that in your CV, uh, you want to put in January 2022 to June 2022, then mm -hmm. June 2022 to December 2022, meaning for the two companies. Now, the reason for that is that mm -hmm. if you put just 2020 to 2020 for mm -hmm. company A, and you also put 2020, mm -hmm. so, so you put 2022 to 2022 for company A, you also put 2022 mm -hmm. to 2022 for company B. Now, the way the ATS works is that if you just say 2022, that's for company 2022 minus 2022 equals zero. So it means then that you I have, have zero years. Yeah, you have zero years. <laughs> <laughs> but if you include uh -huh. January, you don't need to include the old date. There's no point. But if you include mm -hmm. January 2022 to June 2022, then it recognizes mm -hmm. this as six months for you. Then for the second okay. one to June 2022, December 2022, it recognizes as six months. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. you can only maybe try and do that if you don't have situations like that. So say, for example, you worked in a company from 2018 to 2022. That one is pretty straightforward. You can just mm -hmm. say 
20 years, you know, the trend, trend, trend. That will count as four years. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. pretty much how that is. Stuff works. Oh, all right. Yeah. So we have written our resume, we have put in the keywords, we have put in everything in the description. How yeah. should we save PDF or should we save it in PDF format or should we save it in uh, the Word document? Which one is better for the ATS machine? Yeah, so my understanding is that uh, you should save it in PDF. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you should, if you save it in PDF and then the way you save it also matters. So you see mm -hmm. some people, they save their CV with draft CV, updated CV, CV1, CV2. No, you have to put in the exact editing that you have on your CV. So if on your mm -hmm. CV you have written your first name, your middle name, and your last name, then when you are saving the file, you save that mm -hmm. document with your first name, your middle name, and your last name. Then maybe you can now add mm -hmm. CV or resume at the back of it. But the major thing is save it with the exact name. So if what you have on your CV is just your first name and your last name, and that's what you should mm -hmm. also save your file with so that any interviewer or recruiter that picks it up will be able to identify mm -hmm. it and it makes it easy for you so yeah then when you are sending out your cv make sure you use pdf not word document it's always more professional that way okay yeah. hi how how about uh we have already now saved we have written everything that is required yeah. uh, are there tools that maybe we can use that are going to help us to know whether we are going to pass the ATS machine that you keep hearing about or yeah. do we just trust in God? <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so there, there are actually some tools uh, that mm -hmm. uh, people have made available. So there are two that I ever know of. So the first one is topcv.com. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if you go to topcv.com, the website, you go there, you upload your resume, then it's it's a machine that does that do, then it automatically reviews your resume for you, and it gives mm -hmm. you various points as to the improvement that you need to make on your CV. Uh, another one is resumewarded.com, Res resumewarded.com. Mm -hmm. So if you go there as well, mm -hmm. same thing, you upload your, I think it also reviews LinkedIn as well your LinkedIn profile. Okay. So you, you upload okay. your CV, it does the magic, and then it gives you the, the, the for each section of your CV, it explains the weakness, the strength, and what you need to do to mm -hmm. improve on them. Yeah, so that, that that's basically it. And then lastly, right. you can trust in God, like you mentioned. <laughs> of course, God has to be in this one. Yeah. Uh, everything that we do. Okay, so how about uh, what do you think contributed most to you getting this job offers from uh, UK, Canada, yeah. and Ireland? Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, basically, I, I would say that consistency really matters. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because you get a lot of rejections, it is just normal. Oh. It is not like you are not good or your resume is not good. Although mm -hmm. there are times when you also need to okay, look at those rejections and ask yourself, what are those things that I should have done better? So in terms of, okay, mm -hmm. are there areas that you need to improve on on your CV or maybe you even got an interview invite and then the, the feedback wasn't good enough. So you also need to look mm -hmm. at and reflect, okay, what are those things that I should have done to improve on it? So basically I think consistency really matters because regardless of how good you are, there are situations where you actually get feedback that are not favorable. Yeah, so, and then another thing is in terms of focused applications. So the kind of applications that you make, it has to be focused, like I mentioned earlier. And like I said, mm -hmm. also, you have to leverage on your rejection mills because those rejection mills eventually shoot you up as well. So I think that, that that's basically it for me. And yeah, yeah, that's just it. I lost you for a moment. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But did you hear the last word that I said? I heard until where you said that when you get a job offer and then uh, you should be reflecting on what the rejections have been about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. So the major thing is consistency and focused applications and then leverage on your rejection news to improve on yourself. That, that's pretty okay. much it. Okay, so maybe I think uh, we have learned a lot uh, about what you did and uh, how you got yourself a job in Canada. And uh, guys have, I think they have uh, 
discovered the ways that uh, maybe they have been writing their resumes wrongly, which is affecting how they have been getting uh, job offers. So if you want to get a job offer in Canada, you can actually visit, uh, I, I added a Mola in his channel. He has talked about so much about Canada relocation. And uh, maybe added a Mola, as you give us your parting shots, where can these people find you? Okay, so uh, you can just, you can see this guy here. I don't know if it, yeah. can, it is clear. It is called IFRS yes. is easy. So just go to YouTube mm -hmm. and type in IFRS is easy. You should see this logo and then you know that that's my channel. Yeah, so just okay. type IFRS is easy. Yeah, All so right. then I have a playlist that is focused on relocation. So just go to, mm -hmm. just go to my playlist. You see my location playlist there. And then, yeah, you're good to go. Okay, maybe something that I would like you to emphasize on is the benefit of you writing a job of, I mean, uh, the job application, despite them taking a longer time, in terms of saving these people from getting to pay for IELTS exams, yeah. paying for, for uh, showing the proof of funds. For example, uh, in the Kenyan currency, we have uh, the 13,310 Canadian dollars are translating into 1,200,000 Kenyan wow. shillings. <laughs> yeah, it's quite an wow. amount, you know. And for somebody who doesn't have a good job currently, they're having a family to feed, uh, yeah. that could be a very huge barrier into them yeah. landing in Canada. But yeah. as you have uh, experienced in your journey to and relocation, you have been able to overcome this by just getting a job <laughs> offer, you know? So could you emphasize a little bit about this? Yeah, 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 correct. So I, I think basically I, I feel that like you mentioned, uh, we should mm -hmm. probably put more focus on applying to visa sponsored jobs because it saves you all the hassles of having to uh, uh, get proof of fund, get right IELTS, uh, get mm -hmm. sponsorship by yourself. I mean, it saves you the hassle. So if you could just go to Canada Job Bank, there are quite a number of websites that I can also visit. Uh, if even if you go to Google, just type visa sponsored jobs to Canada and all, you will see there are quite a number of them. Uh, it, it's not just for Canada alone, you can also try others. There's UK, there's Ireland, just keep mm -hmm. trying and it will eventually come true. Yeah, so, so that's pretty much it. Okay, there's something that you mentioned at the beginning of your vid uh, of your of this video, yeah. and uh, before now we log out and uh, end the live stream. Uh, there's something that you mentioned about your company, the ca the one that you were working on uh, in okay. uh, in Nigeria. Yes. So, did that help you in landing the job offer? Did it contribute to you landing the job offer? Yeah, I, I would say yes, it did. Uh, yeah, yes, it did mm -hmm. uh, because of the experience that I have. Yeah, but regardless of that, I, I believe that you can get jobs because it is not compulsory that has to be in a certain uh, line of uh, experience. I mm -hmm. mean, there are quite a okay. number of jobs. There is job for HR, there is job for administrative assistant for customer service. Mm -hmm. There are quite a number mm -hmm. of them. If you go to Canada Job Bank, you will see so many, even for farmers, there for, are so many. for healthcare. I mean, so you just need to uh, do the hard work of applying, searching for them. And there are quite a number of uh, websites too that I can uh, search through. If you go to my, uh, uh, my video, my channel, you see quite a number of them in one of my description box. Just search for any mm -hmm. of the videos and go to the description box. I always try and list out the sites that you can actually uh, go to to search for jobs. So that's pretty much it. The major thing is consistency and keep pushing and keep searching for those jobs and to eventually come true. Okay, thank you so much Adedamola for coming and sharing this with us. We know we have been trying, we have sent so many job applications, yeah. we have not gotten job offers. Some of us have been here uh, for the past two years, some of us three years, and we are still hoping and seeing you that you have been able to achieve this uh, dream and made it a reality, then it is giving us hope that we yeah. too can be able to achieve it. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming Thanks. along. And guys, please go subscribe.
subscribe to his channel. He's giving very informative education about Canada relocation. And this is from first-hand experience. I mean, if Adodamola is not the person to go to, I don't know who else <laughs> should be doing this. Honestly, I don't know because we have been looking for the, for the simplest way especially in terms of finances and uh you provide us with a very good example and congratulations about that and also thank you, thank you for agreeing to share with us because <laughs> you could have kept it to yourself and said you know i found a job in canada i'm now earning and it's a uh, it's okay my life is not going the way i wanted it but you chose to share it with us so thank you and uh, guys go ahead subscribe to his channel and i know you're going to be learning a lot and don't also forget to subscribe here. <laughs> yeah, sure. so as you go to subscribe to his channel, also subscribe to this channel. Yeah. And I hope that you have learned a lot and you have learned the things that you required for you to land a job in Canada. So until next time, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.